you would have like cognitive, um, you'd have like bodily, and then you'd have like parts work. Parts work. Parts work. So parts would be, let's say something happened to you at age 10 and you almost drowned or something of that nature, right? There would be, under, under one of these theories, there would be this part of you that becomes wounded at age 10, and then there's other parts that try to protect you from experiencing that again. You know, so maybe you get uneasy around water, uh, maybe you avoid, you avoid pool parties, or you, um, anything that kind of resembles that kind of way. Um, our body is very protective right? Our body and mind is very protective. So they actually will create what are called managers to help manage parts of you that are wounded. Um, what's interesting about that is um, you have to look at a lot of stuff that guys do to cope with things that are kind of not healthy, right? So the managers want you to avoid, get angry and shut down, escape, run away, clam up, um, overwork, right? Um, another version of these managers is called firefighters. This is where the porn comes in. This is where the numbing out. This is where vegging out. Um, it's like a lot of guys get lost in porn. A lot of guys get lost in these, what I call externalizing behaviors. It's because they're not experiencing their wounded part. But it makes sense, right? If yeah. your body, if your body's trying to protect you, does it want you to experience that wounded part? Yeah, it's probably no. Not really, right? It's dangerous. No. Dangerous, yeah, and um, it's a wide range for a lot of people, right? Um, some people would say we all have ten to fifteen active parts within our, if you want to call it a psyche, which is kind of interesting. How did <laughs> How did they come up with that? No, I'm, this is this is really fascinating. I haven't heard yeah. so I've heard a little bit of this, but that's so. How did they even come up with fifteen? That's crazy. Um, yeah, so it's not like fifteen, like right on the dot, but that's okay. like the average. Um, so I believe they came up with this. So internal family systems. Um, I'm blanking on the guy who actually came up with it. It's in Chicago area, but um, essentially. And if anyone out there is a pro in IFS, like, don't kill me. Like, I'm just now getting into it. Um, but it is essentially he found that people with eating disorders and people with underlying trauma, once you actually started to talk to them and understand them, shocker, right? Once you actually listen to people and use compassion, they open up. Well, that's so hard to understand. But uh, <laughs> um, he found that people had these, these different personas that were actually in charge of keeping this person safe. Huh. And he was able to talk to these parts. Um, now, for some people, those parts were just younger versions of themselves. But interesting enough, sometimes these parts were just, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like almost personas or avatars, if that makes sense. Yeah. So they'd be like, you know, and I've, I've had it explained to me in the past is, you know, okay, this part of me feels like a medieval knight that is just armored out and will slay anything that comes in my way. Or this part of me feels like a church mouse that just, you know, has to get away and scurry away and not deal with any problems, right? And so it's, it's really interesting. But once you tap into people's creativity and there's their experience about that, it it just creates this this whole world, this whole vast internal network of of who we are as humans, and it's pr it's pretty radical, man. Honestly, yeah, yeah. W would you say that these personas actually exist, like they're real? Uh, yeah, I mean, as real as your personality is. So, um, wow. Yeah, and the, the creepier part, if you want to go there, is these. If you get down to this and get good enough with this. You can actually feel where these certain parts reside in your nervous system. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you have a guy, a manager that likes to get mad so you don't have to look at anything vulnerable. Maybe that guy lives, you know, in your chest and he's there to kind of, you know, shut everything down so you don't have to feel anything going on. Um, a, a lot of bigger areas. And I'm not a pro in the somatic stuff, but a lot of the other areas could be your stomach. You know, your lower back, yeah. um, obviously your arms, you know, 
Um, it, it's, it's pretty interesting.